to implement the rest, I close my sample. I'm just adding behind my text some seconds so that people are informed what we are talking about. You can see I'm not able to change here anything. The reason for that is the script is all, execution is already running. Here we are. To get that off, I just deactivate it here. So now I can insert some text. Here we are. These are the seconds I want to add. And additionally to that, I'm now interested in two things. First of all, I like to implement a way to select a specific amount of person objects by passing into the script a condition. And the second and very important part is that I will just add some more comment lines into my script. And to show you what was done at the end, you can see now a lot of green lines. These green lines helps me to understand what the script is doing. And last but not least, I was expanding here the query that is used to build our collection object by a where clause. And to define the where clause is pretty easy because the where clause should come from the outer side of the script. So the only one, uh, the only thing that was to do was just to create a variable, which is defined here in the header of the script. And it's used here. And with that, the complete script, it's now written. It is exporting stuff into a CSV file. It's writing log messages and it could now be productively used. So last test, I press F5 again. You can see there is a CSV file. And if I open that CSV file here with a text editor, you will automatically see some records. Here they are, only 38, all are starting with an A you cannot see B's, C's or D's. The reason for that is that my condition is now working as well. And in addition to that exists the log file. Here we are. And the log file shows what we expect. The number of seconds, just one second, and number of objects. And hey, that is what we like to get. Again, we developed this person export in that way, especially because we want to show you how to use the API. Part of the API is as well to create scripts running as fast as possible. In our exercise, we are exporting around about 1050 people out of our database. Such an export typically takes not a lot of time. And if you look on the screen, you can see that around about 24 seconds is the amount of time you need to export all of these data which is not too bad, especially because we get the list we like and to get it in 25 seconds, this is a very nice exercise. Nevertheless, it is important sometimes, especially if you want to handle a big amount of data, that a script runs as fast as possible. There are many ways to increase the performance. I want to show you in the next couple of minutes just two parts, which from our perspective are the main parts you should take care of. First of all, if we just look on that specific export, as you can see here, when I made that 10 exercises, I was able to run that script in 21 seconds with a standard deviation of 384 milliseconds, which at the end, it's a really good deviation that shows that the SQL Server was running all the time, more or less, with the same performance. Okay, now I like to implement something that helps me to get my script a little bit faster executed. The first rule if you want to increase the performance of a script is to avoid single objects. The reason for that is single objects are the most expensive objects you can create. And so we want to minimize the amount of single objects. If you look here into my specific script, there is a DB person as a single object. If I just comment that out, then you will see where I always use that single object. And here it is in the for loop. This means that every time the loop steps forward, one single object gets created. It's the DB person object. Now the question is, are we able to avoid this single object? And yes, of course we are, especially if we only need the display data or if we only need the data of this single object. We are not able to do that if we want to handle the object like an update, a delete or something else. But to get values, we are able to avoid these objects. And this is by 
extending the collection object we need. This is the one we are building the loop around it. And we are able to do that by modifying the collection object in a way that all the elements, that means all the values we need in the single object, we get from the collection object. To do so, we just extend the number of display values from that collection object. I just move a little bit up to the definition and here is the query that helps me to create my collection object later on. And as you can see here, we are selecting the display. What the select display here does is it exactly shows the display pattern which is defined in the database. So if we step in object browser and we look at the table person, then you can see that as a display pattern, the internal name of the person is taken internal name followed by the account name in parentheses. What I like to do now is I like to replace that by something which is manually defined. And so I just change that to a select, which says don't select the disk, which is predefined. Just select what I like to do. And here I add as a separated list, all of the captions for my columns I like to get as a display, which is list of my properties. I just copied here the header of my CSV file and to get the whole thing working, I have to define a complete list and account name, central account and department and location are UIDs as you can remember UID department and UID location locality. What I did here is I define now a manually display and this display surprise surprise contains all of the columns that means all of the values I need for my specific export. The next step to do is to use this display. Therefore I step down to my for each loop here we are um, I don't need the single object anymore. So I deactivate that single object and write a comment. And here in the loop, there is my department and my location, which is depending on my single object DB person, which is deactivated. So I have to replace that. And to do that, I will use a specific function that call, it's called get single value. And to use that, I comment first of all these lines out and add a comment that this is on the basis of my first performance optimization. So, and then I write that in a new way. I do that with session.source and session.source has something that is named try get single value, here we are. This is something uh, that is a generic function and to uh, get a result I can use, I have first to define which data type I want to get out. It's a string. And then I add first the table name, which is department. And after the department, I add the column name I want to get. That is the department name. And after that, I need a query that defines the object where I want to get the department name from and at least the variable where the whole thing gets assigned to, which is my str department. Here we are. Last thing we have to do, we have to define our query. And here I like to, I like to add a specific condition, which is already predefined. It's a string format. The condition is UID department equals parameter. And the parameter is from my collection element, the value UID department. Remember, it's a display name. We can do that now. And the whole thing to a string, which at the end, then it's a where clause. The same thing I will do for my location. Remember the table name for my location, it's locality. And so we have the same thing defined for my location. And with that department and location exists. Now let's handle the other properties. The next change that is here, you can see there is the DB person object, which not exists anymore. And so we modify that now in a way that we just replace that with our collection object. So to make that correct, I just comment these lines out like before. And instead of this, I will just use then the collection object. 
And to make it working, as you saw that above here, I can just use the collection element now. So I copy the collection element instead of the single object. Here we are. The rest should work. Oh, there are some smaller problems implemented, which at the end nothing other else is as that I cannot write text into a specific command. So I cut it off and paste it in front. This is at the end the new one using the collection element. And what you can see here is now that uh, after this it's done, you see here the collection element instead of the single object we commanded out. And this will help me then to get the values direct from the collection element and avoid the single objects. So with that, my first change in the script is done. It's pretty easy. You can see two things. We just replaced the object walkers because we don't have single objects anymore we can use. And we replaced the single object by the collection element and we increased the collection element in a way that we increased the number of display values. Here we are. Now let's test and figure out how long it takes. As you easily can see, if we test our new modification is that the script runs now much shorter than before. We are now down to 4,485. If we look at this in our chart, then you can see that the standard deviation with uh, 196 milliseconds, it's good enough to be able to be sure that our SQL server is continuously well. But if you look at the execution time in milliseconds, then you see that now our script is much faster than it was before. And if you look on top into the table, you see a performance optimization that says our standard script, our first implemented script, it was, was running in an average of 21 seconds. Our new modification runs now the script with 4.3 seconds, which at the end, it's a performance optimization of 80%. That means the script now runs only 20% that long than it was before, which is good for the first step. And that shows very drastically from my perspective that avoiding single objects, it's something you should ever do in the scripts if this is possible.